In today's video, I'm going over setting up both the Navilink and the Navilink Lite. Plus, I'm going over some common problems during setup and how to fix them. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is grab our 5-pin connector. And on version 1s, you'll be plugging it to the right-hand side of the digital display. And on version 2s, you'll be plugging it to the left-hand side of the digital display. Then you're going to grab your RS485 connector and plug this into your Navilink Lite. So once you got that plugged in, go ahead and turn the unit on and this will also provide power to the Navilink light. So you won't need a separate DC 12 volt power adapter. You want to make sure you already did your setup wizard. If you haven't, do that first. Then once you're on the screen with your set temperature, you're going to press the M and the back arrow at the same time for about five seconds. You're going to get into your installer menu, putting in your password of one, two, three, four. Once you get in, you're going to go down to number three, your application settings. Oh, hell not. Nah. Didn't have to burn my house down this time. Now we're back at it. We're going to press number one, Navilink. Then, as you can see, you get the Navilink connection option. You're just going to click OK. Click OK twice. And then you're going to click on Enable. By default from the factory, this comes as disabled. So you want to make sure you enable this that way the Navilink can communicate with your unit. Okay, so enabling these settings on the version 1 control is a little bit different. So what you're going to do instead is turn the power off by holding the power button. Press the plus button three times, the minus button three times, and then the plus button four times, and 1.tec will pop up on your screen. And you're going to hit the plus button one time, hit the circle with the eye to get into this menu. You're going to see a lot of parameter options here. I believe there's 32 in total, but you're just going to scroll until you see 18. Once you're at 18, you're going to hit the circle with the eye again to get into this parameter. And you'll see by default from the factory, just like the other one, it's going to be off. But you're going to go ahead and turn this on, hit the plus button to turn it on. You'll see it blink. Hit the circle with the eye to make it stop blinking. This confirms the setting that you want. Then you can hit the reset button to get out of here or just press the power button like I did. Alrighty guys, for me, I have an iPhone, but if you're on Samsung, it's pretty easy to follow along. Um, you're just doing the equivalent of what I'm doing, but on your own app store. So I'm gonna open up my app store. Uh, look up the word Navilink and the first app that pops up minus the ad um, should be the one. It looks like this. Once you download it, you're going to click the open button and that should take you straight into the Navilink app. Make sure you allow all permissions here. Um, everything that the, the app asks of you is necessary, like Bluetooth, for example. Here you can ignore it like I did and hit close, uh, but I did that on purpose so I can show you what happens when you do this. Um, so once you're on this screen, you're going to go ahead and hit sign up. Um, you're going to go ahead and read through the terms and conditions as you should. Uh, no one ever does, but you should. And then you click um, the check marks for each one. Click continue and it'll ask you for an email and password. You're going to type in the email, your password. Uh, make sure that your password is 10 to 20 characters long. Otherwise, it won't go through. Once you got that all figured out, you're going to click done and they should send you a verification email. You're going to go to your email of choice. For me, in this case, is Outlook. And you're going to go ahead and look for that Navilink email to confirm. In this case, I tried to refresh and I didn't find it. So this may happen to you. Just go to your spam folder or for Outlook, it's your junk folder. And nine out of 10 times, if you didn't find it there, you're going to find it here. As you can see, I found it. I click on it and I'll just click confirm to verify the account. Now, because you're clicking a link in your junk email, you're going to get some sort of security prompt likely. That's okay. We know Navian is a legitimate company. You also can verify the email that it's coming from. I'm going to go ahead and just click OK here and uh, continue to confirm my account. You didn't get a message like this that says that you confirmed the account. Now let's go back to the Navilink app. We're going to click done now and it should allow us to go through. On the member type, we have three different selections. All we care about is the first one. We're going to go ahead and select owner. We're going to go ahead and enter our, our first name, our last name, and a good phone number. Once you got that, hit next. It's going to load up. It will ask you which product you have. 
In this case, I'll be showing you uh, both products. Um, I'm not going to be showing you the heat pump water heater today, but maybe in the future. Uh, for right now, you're going to select NaviLink Lite. You'll see it prompt you to uh, press and hold the Wi-Fi button for three seconds. So for each NaviLink, the button is in a different location. So I have both locations on screen now. Press and hold whichever button applies to you. You'll see that the colors go from red to blinking blue. And now here's where <laughs> it doesn't allow you to go through. So this is the one issue that people run into where they get stuck on the screen. I simply enabled my Bluetooth setting and it let me go through. So just make sure your Bluetooth is enabled. That is gonna save you a headache. Now on this screen here, we wanna make sure that we connect to uh, 2.4 Hertz. Now I wish I got an example of what happens when you don't, but typically you try to go through the screens and when you're at the setting to hit done, it's grayed out and it won't let you go through like here right now. So when you run into this gray uh, done button where it doesn't allow you to select done because it's grayed out, uh, you want to do two things. One, you want to make sure that the internet you're connected to is actually 2.4 hertz band. A lot of the times, if it's not, it will not allow you to go through because the NaviLink is not compatible with anything else. Uh, so that's where this kicks in uh, and why it's important. You won't be able to finish the setup unless you verify that. So at this point, it's good to Google or YouTube how to ensure you're on 2.4 hertz band. Now, other than that, you want to make sure you have your product name filled out. You can put whatever you want there and product type filled out as well. So either residential or commercial, uh, your state, city and address should all be pre-filled and your installer slash service email will be empty. Uh, your installer slash service cell phone should also be empty. On the home screen, you're able to click on your NaviLink. You'll be able to see status info here. You're going to be able to see whether the unit is error coded, uh, if you, what your current gas usage is. Now, right now, there's no usage for me at all because I don't really have this actually connected. It's, a, it's one of my test units. Have a uh, domestic outlet temp. It shows you that and it shows you the inlet temp which I'm sure that's just what it is standing because obviously there's no water through the unit right now. Um, and then if I had water running through it, it would give me my capacity. So at what capacity is it? If you wanted to set a schedule um, on your phone for when the unit should research, you could. You would have to go on your actual uh, unit first and you're gonna have to set it up for recirculation and the mode that you select would have to be set to weekly. Um, so I do give a quick tutorial on how to do that here. Once you select weekly, it'll tell you to set it up in the NaviLink app, as like so. And then you go back to your NaviLink app and now what was once grayed out will be um, available for you to select. Um, so you'll see a little loading screen, gotta wait for that to go. And then I can go ahead and enable it. And once I enable it, I'm able to select um, where it says weekly set and it'll give me my sun Sunday to Saturday and on this, I can select each day and select a different time frame when I want the research to kick on slash off. Um, I could also set it for just Monday to Friday a certain time and then Saturday and Sunday a different time. Um, if, if I didn't want to do like every day a, a different time frame. Um, that's really the only time you'll set it like for Sunday to Saturday if you really have a different time for each and every single day. If you have the same time for Monday to Friday, you could just select the Monday to Friday um, option and then what it'll do is allow you to set a, diff a different time um, for recirculation for Monday to Friday and a different time for recirculation for Saturday, Sunday. So if you're like working all day, um, you know, Monday to Friday, then you can set it for a specific time whenever you come back home or something. And then Saturday, Sunday, maybe you're home all day and that's where you'll set it for a little bit more often. Um, you know, something like that. You can really customize it however way you want. Okay, so really quickly, I'm just gonna go over setting up the actual NaviLink, the original. Connect your RS4A5 connector. And you're gonna go ahead and connect the little band, the little Wi-Fi band here. Um, then for this example, I'm gonna show you where to connect the ethernet port, but you don't really have to do that. Uh, and then the power adapter for this. And that's what you should have. A little bit of a different step here. So once you press and hold that Wi-Fi button, you actually have to go into your Wi-Fi settings and find the NaviLink. It'll be labeled something like N-Link followed by some numbers. You click on it, wait for it to kind of connect and then go back to the NaviLink app and you'll see this message that says your device ID has been generated. So on the alert screen as well, if you're on Ethernet port, you're not gonna go ahead and hit next, you're gonna hit done instead. 
Um, but in this for this example, we're gonna hit next so I can show you the actual Wi-Fi how to do this. It's pretty much the same step. You make sure you are on a 2.4 hertz band. Make sure you put in your password correctly. And here you'll see I ran into a bit of an issue where it wasn't generating my address. I kind of played with the map a little bit and bam, <laughs> it popped up. Um, so, you know, be patient here. Make sure that that definitely generates your address here. Uh, and this is another issue that you might run into here. The server is not responding. Please try again later. Refresh to see if it get if it works. And then if it doesn't work, go ahead and force close the app. Go back into your Wi-Fi settings and just make sure that you're connected to your internet. And same thing here with the NaviLink, you're able to adjust the temperature live here. So um, as soon as you change the setting on the phone and hit save, a couple seconds later, the unit will follow suit. Hopefully that explains NaviLink for you guys. Now on the boilers and combis, uh, there is a bit of a different step for enabling the NaviLink. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll try to get one of those test panels uh, to show you an, an IRL uh, demonstration. If you guys are interested in that, let me know. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, press the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. I appreciate you guys for watching.